What's up, guys? It's Chris from DMGH Podcast. Three, two, one, let's go. Welcome to Don't Mind the Golden Handcuffs Podcast or DMGH Podcast. A place for future and present attorneys or any young professional to find the motivation they need to further their minds, careers, and financial success. It's hard to make it out there when you came from nothing. We want to provide you with some help with that. Of course, a one-person team couldn't accomplish this. DMGH Podcast experienced guests will guide us on this road to career and financial success. First, let's take this law thing one step at a time with your host Chris what's up guys it's Chris from DMGH podcast today we have with us Dan Barley Dan as always thanks for being with us today oh, my pleasure Chris thanks for having me as always today we're talking about house house hacking right yep um, what is house hacking so house hacking the way most people define it is where you own a house and you have a mortgage on it and you can rent out individual rooms to your friends or strangers uh, and charge them a fee. And if you rent out enough rooms, essentially you get to live for free because the rent you'll receive from your tenants will go to pay your mortgage. Mm. So like essentially you purchase, is this only with multifamily houses or could it be with like single family houses and you rent out the basement? It could be a single family house. And like uh, if you have a four bedroom house, you can rent out three bedrooms if you're a single person, yeah. let's say, or if your wife is cool with... <laughs> you know, three people living in a house. Yeah, yeah. And I've, I've seen it before. Uh, one of my friends in college, her family rented out two bedrooms in their house. It didn't pay for the mortgage in their situation, but that's when I was first exp uh, exposed to that concept. Yeah, and what happened probably, even though it might not have paid the full mortgage, it, it still gave them, bit. right, it, it made the mortgage less. Exactly. And since housing is one of people's biggest expense, if you can make a dent in that, it usually helps. Yeah, definitely. When's the first time, the first time you heard of house hacking? Oh, that's uh, an interesting question. I guess I like before the term was coined, I actually did it uh, un unbeknownstly when I was in law school, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, what I did is I got a two bedroom and I said, what if we subdivide it and each get two people in a room and put up a wall? And that way our housing expense was very minimal yeah. compared to a lot of our friends. Um, I didn't know what it was called. I don't I think I might have heard the term for the first time around 2012. Yeah. Yeah, and it's I really caught on a lot, as I'm sure you know. For sure. I think once it was coined, you start seeing a lot more people yeah. doing it. Yeah. When I first heard of, about it through Bigger Pockets, I read yep. the book and they talked about house hacking. Um, but you don't hear a lot about the negatives. Right. So if, if you're willing, I want to kind of go through the positives with you and then the yep. negatives. I think that'd be great. Very uh, thorough. So one positive that, that I heard about when I read the book, let's say for Bigger Pockets, is that you're able to use FHA loan many times um, for house hacking. Because you could purchase your right. home with the FHA loan, and then obviously, like we we talked about, you could rent out the first floor or whether it's different rooms. Correct. Um, but not everyone is eligible for a FHA, FHA loan, and it might not be good for everyone either, right? That is correct. And also, just so you know, with FHA loans, you do have to live there as your primary residence, yes. I believe. For how long for, is it? I, I'm not sure now it's if it's one year or two of the first three years or two of the first five years, but... There is a requirement that you have to live there as your primary residence. Yeah. And I've actually had clients who never lived there and then they got caught later on and that was not a good situation for them. Yeah, that's not pretty. Yeah. So definitely if, if you're looking to invest out of state, you probably should steer away from house hacking. Well, no, you shouldn't necessarily steer away from house hacking, but you definitely should not get an FHA mortgage because you're not mm -hmm. going to live there. Like oh, I always yeah, tell everyone. Course. But to, but oh yeah, that's true, I guess, because you can always purchase a uh, house in Kansas um, not FHA, rent out two yeah, rooms. Conventional rent out individual rooms, home. right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, of course, yeah. But I, like I tell everyone, clients ask me all the time, investors ask me all the time, never, ever commit mortgage fraud. It's not worth it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, once you're caught, not only yeah. is your is, are you caught, but now your credibility is down the tubes Absolutely. as well to your friends and family that yep. found out. And anyone who knows, and yeah. if you're in jail, other people are going to know that too. Yeah. I feel like when I heard about house hacking, I was also introduced to FHA loan at the same time. So I kind of think of them as very similar, Together. although they're obviously two separate they know, are. type of things. But it's exciting, right? Like if it's the first time you get introduced to that concept, you're like, yeah. oh my, this is great. This is yeah. genius. And you get excited and you yeah. know, want to take action on it. And I think also if you're doing house hacking, you may be in the same economic position of a person wanting to do FHA loan, mm -hmm. you know, because it's one good way to invest when you don't have a lot of money. That's true. Because so, FHA loan, you have to put down 3.5% exactly, only. Exactly, yeah. And I think it may have lowered it. I'm not sure. 
Maybe I, 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 I know I there's a, I think there's a 3% down loan now. I don't know if it's FHA or not, but yeah, I thought that was you have it. to be careful because you, a lot of times they have mortgage insurance, which adds a lot of money to the, sometimes to the payment. Yeah. Monthly. And don't you also have to pay a certain amount to the, what is it, government or the bank? Yeah. You FHA so it's uh, called MIP, which is mortgage insurance premium. And it's usually a one-time charge, uh, which is a percentage of the loan amount that's paid up front. And then monthly, you have a monthly insurance charge because it's a federally insured loan and that cuts into your cash flow of course of course and that's the name of the game yeah yep. definitely uh so yes yeah, so i heard them interchangeably but uh i guess you could do both of them together you don't have to so some positives right. what to you are some positives uh the positives are that you get to reduce your own personal housing expense uh you get the knowledge of being a landlord you get um cash flow of course which is king um so those i think are the three biggest positives that come to my mind right away mm -hmm. um but also i guess the experience of being a landlord is is pretty priceless because it's your own house you are yeah. managing tenants even without really feeling like you're managing tenants because yeah. most people i know that house hack it's to friends and or acquaintances someone they have some sort of relationship with yeah i feel like i plugged in bigger pockets like so many times in this podcast but they're so good they are amazing i know i listened to one episode where shout uh, out to bigger pockets yeah, shout out <laughs> Uh, Brandon Turner is in Hawaii now, isn't he? I believe so. That's Brandon, right if you're there. watching. <laughs> um, and I think he's also house hacking down there. I, I, I think you might I, be right. I think I saw that on his Instagram. I think you might be right. That's Brandon, leave a comment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but uh, I remember one of their episodes, it was like a, college, a kid was talking about how he was in college and mm -hmm. he house hacked. Yep. So I think that's amazing because compared to buying a six family home, this is something someone of any age can do, whether you're 20 or even 18, it's something that you can do as soon as you could buy a property and you have right. some cash to put right. down. In this case, it's three to three and a half. Yep. You can kind of get started, which yeah. is nice. Absolutely. And that way you get a leg up on almost everybody yeah. if you start early enough, you know? When I first started about thinking in, about investing in real estate, that was my first option. I was thinking about uh, like, how can mm -hmm. I house hack? Yeah. But ended up things worked out a little differently and I was, obviously I was introduced to different opportunities, right. but that was my first initial attempt was how am I gonna house hack? Yeah. Because it's such a witty It's of, very, it's, yeah, very clever. Very good thing for a lot of people to do if they're just getting started. Yeah. And also, like you said, I think a big positive is a lot of times you know the person you're renting to. Yes which is helpful, yes. but, but there's, there's always a but. <laughs> <laughs> so negatives, this is the part where you don't find anywhere else in any other podcast. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a big, big podcast listener and I, I never hear anyone talk about the negatives of house hacking. So I think uh, for completeness sake, it's important to talk about some of those negatives and know what you're getting into. Yeah. The biggest negatives in my mind are one, as you just said, it is you're generally renting to friends and or acquaintances who you have a relationship with. So there's no worse way to ruin a relationship than to have someone become co adversarial if they're not able to pay their rent. Yeah. Then you you feel awkward. I have to confront them. It's my house. They owe me the rent, but this is my friend. Should I let them slide? Exactly. And then you get into that you know slippery slope of how much do you how much leeway do you give them yeah. because they're your friend or they're your you know sibling or, or whatever the case might be. Yeah. I mean, I've seen yeah. friendships end just because one person owed another person money for pizza, yeah. let alone oh like God. hundreds of dollars, wow. thousands of dollars. Yeah. I've seen people go to jail over, you know, not necessarily trivial amounts of money, but small amounts of money because yeah. it makes people go crazy. Yeah. It destroys families, let alone oh, yeah. friendships. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I have will contests in my office, so it's all over money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, although we just talked about this, I do still feel like if you're house hacking, it's more common when you're doing it in state rather than out of state because you're living in it, right? Correct. You could do it out of state if well, it's like a vacation home or if you're... Yeah, but, but if it's out of state, I think then it's just the rental because exactly, you're not yeah, there. You're not there, yeah. right? So I guess one negative is that if you're house hacking, your opportunities in terms of real estate and purchasing real estate, it, it's in your local area. Right. So prices are going to... If you live in New York City, New Jersey... California. Uh, D.C., California, house hacking, it might not even um, result in you saving money depending right. on what you're renting it for. Right. So yep. I think that's a big negative as well. Absolutely. Like no more looking at the South unless you live in the, in the South. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, but yeah, what else? Um, I, oh, I think I thought about one earlier today when I was thinking about this topic. Yep. If your tenants um, toilet breaks, uh, you get a full on knock at your house. like On your room. Yeah. yeah and it, you, it's not like yeah. a call. You get a full on like, Dan, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's definitely true. Right. Because you are the person. So they're there for you. And if something goes wrong, they're going to be yeah. right there in person. You can't avoid your yeah. tenant at that point. Not that we try to avoid our tenants, course, but you know so. what I mean? Like 
if it's a phone call away and it's someone else's house, you're not yeah. immediately impacted by it. Whereas if if we're sharing a house and you t- the toilet mm-hmm. breaks, you're running into my room. Dan, what's going on in exactly. my toilet? And I, oh, I got to deal with this right now. I yeah. can't even like prep for it. And even if you give them a number to call, you're still going to be their go-to person just because yep. from you know naturally they're going to try to. Yeah, absolutely. You. you can't be like, yeah, you have to call my manager. Yeah, when you're <laughs> when you're right upstairs. Right, right. So to me, that was a big negative. Yeah. I think another negative is possibly, of course, there's exceptions. I think the properties you buy tend to be more expensive than a single family home, right? I mean, if you're buying, if you're house hacking, more, more likely than not, you're buying what a two family home, three family home. Compared uh, or to even a single family, family home. You could. Yeah. But from what I heard, um, a lot of times it's like two families and three families. Okay. Or is that not the case? Uh, and from my understanding, it's a single family home. Mm-hmm. Because if it's a two family, you live in one floor, you rent out the other. Yeah. Uh, so then there's a separation. But in this, in, from what I understood is it's one single family house or one floor and you're renting rooms of that yeah. one unit, essentially. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So what are the negatives? You. Uh, the other negative, I, like I think that, like you have to be prepared and willing to sacrifice privacy, and kind of like give up your lifestyle. Like if you, a lot of us have gone to col- college and had roommates, so you know what that's like. And you can't always control your roommates. And you know if someone, you know, is up late partying mm-hmm. and comes home at 3 a.m., they might be waking you up. So what you thought was a good night's yeah. sleep now turns into you hear keys rattling and being dropped and people are a little, uh, you know, boisterous and loud. Yeah. So you have to give up some of that and you have to make a decision if it's worth the cash flow and the reduced living expense for you to not have that privacy level, um, which again, for a lot of people is worth it and you know, nothing yeah. wrong with that at all. So what is it called when you have a, like you buy a two family, or three family, you live in one and you rent the other two. I thought that was also considered house hacking. I think that's just called rental. That's just like just rental? Straight, yeah, because you're living in one. That's your primary yeah. residence, so but you're able to rent out the other floors. But every, you, you know, like you're not house hacking. You're, you have yeah. your own unit and then they have their unit, they have their unit. Even if uh, the other two pays for your more, the total mortgage of the, prop, of the yeah. property? Okay. And that's why I think people are very attracted to two and three families because they think they can rent out the yeah. other units to offset their mortgage. Yeah. But this allows you to do the same concept in a single family home mm. from what i understand and again i could be wrong but so one thing i it hit me today too in terms of this topic is that if you're out of the house let's say you're working and you're going and you're working um at your firm and the neighbor or not the neighbor the tenant knocks on your door and it's and it's your wife that opens the door and they talk about a broken sink it becomes a family problem it becomes a problem that your wife oh, yeah. has to deal with because they the tenant sees not only you as the landlord but i guess everyone who lives in your yeah, and you're part of the house. Absolutely, and you know, you, it's hard to separate that then. Yeah. So, do you want your wife? Do you want your kids? You know, seeing that, and like another negative to go back to is if you do have children, you obviously want. We all want to provide the best environment for our children. So, again, are you going to have your kids around people that you may not know so well? Or you know, it's great to be friends with someone, but do you want that person also being responsible to kind of raise your kid? Yeah. That's something very important to think of if you do have small children. Mm. Is there? Does this affect your cash flow at all? Like. In terms of cash flow, what are people looking at in terms of house hacking? It probably varies per location. Yeah, location. right. Like in general, in New Jersey, I'm sure you can rent out a room for maybe a thousand dollars, and yeah. you know, a thousand dollars down in other markets that we invest in is the price of the entire mortgage for a full yeah. loan house. You know, so, maybe two. <laughs> so, if your house, let's say, if the mortgage costs um, eight hundred, do you think that you could charge more than half in terms of if they're se- if, you're, if they're separating the property in half, or I, like do you have to charge significantly less? I mean, I, I think it's less, but you have to look at what the rental rates are. And I think you you have to lower it than a regular rental, right? Because if it's, let's say it's $400 for your own house rental in a different market, and you're saying you're not going to get your own house, but you're going to get a room in my house, would they rather pay 400 for a room in your house or 400 for their own house? Yeah. And I think 400 for your own house is what most people would say. Yeah. So I think to attract somebody, uh, and again, that's why you kind of do this with friends and people you know, but to attract someone like cold, like if you're putting it out on Craigslist, you're probably going to want to put it at 300 or 250 to get somebody in yeah. um, and make it worth their while as well. I think it's a really attractive concept, for, I think, for young people and college students because mm-hmm. they're used to having roommates. To them, it's not a big negative having roommates. They oh, have yeah. friends that want to play. So. Oh, yeah. If I could, if I knew what I know now in college, oh, yeah. forget it. I would have had, I would have house hacked yeah. from my sophomore year on and yeah. that's it. If I had a son, a son or daughter in college, I would purchase a property just to for them to house hack it, yeah. you know, yeah, to have their friends live in and then yeah, the have them pay you the mortgage and yeah, there set. you go. That's it. Yeah. Is there any positives we're missing? I feel like there's so many positives. Uh, that we just cl- cl- the, you know. the deductions, of course, the business, yeah. 
the business uh, knowledge and expertise you'll gain as being a landlord in a not as formal of a way as a rental property is priceless. That's the like that alone might be worth mm -hmm. everything, you know, to be able to get that knowledge that you can then implement going forward if you plan on managing your own properties or at least a handful of your own properties if you're not going to outsource that. Mm -hmm. And in terms of negatives, are there any other negatives in mm. terms of your experiences? I know you house hacked for a little bit, right? Can you explain a little bit uh, more about what you did? Um, I did. <laughs> <laughs> did you, but you're not doing it anymore. Like are you renting that same one out? No, no, not anymore. And I'm trying to remember where I house hacked. Uh, if it was in, oh, it was in law school. Excuse me. Right. So I, I didn't actually uh, buy the property, but I, I had a like essentially the master lease. Yeah. And from that, I said, you know, I found three, you know, colleagues in law school as well. And I said, hey, why don't we split these rooms? You know, you take half, I take half, you take half, you take half. And now we cut the cost in four instead of what other people were paying, yeah. which was four times what we were paying. True. And they all were like, this is a great idea. And yeah. so, I mean, I did that to, again, it increased my cash flow because instead of paying $1,000 for my apartment in law school, I was paying $500. Mm -hmm. So before I, I knew I like what I was doing. I because... Your goal in terms of investing for real estate is to be financially free. Mm -hmm. Financial freedom is being able to live above your, um, to make enough where it pays for your expenses and a little bit more, right? Or Correct. much more depending on what your right. goals are. And this is kind of, in essence, kind of a shortcut because you're using other mm -hmm. people to pay your mortgage down, which in a lot of people, that's their biggest expense. Absolutely. So it's a good way. Do you mind yeah. if I read some questions in a couple of forums and see if we could yeah, go through them? Yeah, let's knock them out. All right. Would I have to live in this property for a minimum a year? If you get an FHA loan or yeah. a certain yeah. loan, which confirms that I'm not crazy, yeah. sometimes no, it's people really, yeah. confuse them. Yeah. <laughs> That's very true, but you, you, that depends on the type of loan you're getting. So always check with yeah. your mortgage company. Like even if you're doing a conventional loan, if you, you do not close it as an owner-occupied loan, if you have no intention of living there, it's not worth the risk. Okay. Next one. Um, any tips slash tricks or advice? on how you found your first buy and hold investment property? I guess that's a gen more general question. That's how, how yeah. it's uh, my, my tip would be to make sure you do your homework. Yeah. Know what you're getting into. Uh, you know, be comfortable with the numbers and, you know, make are sure you, you do your homework. Are you looking... For these for these house hacking properties, are you looking in the same places you look for with your real estate investing in terms of your rental units, like like single family homes, or are you kind of digging in the same market as the general public? Well, I think when you're doing house hacking, like you said earlier, you have to do it in where you live. Yeah. So I don't really invest where I live. So uh, no, I don't do that for myself anymore. Okay. Let's see here. Trying to see if there's anything else in terms of, I feel like a lot of times we go through these topics and because we're exposed to it so often and we learned about it a while ago, we kind of glaze over these really important questions because to us, they're not really. Because they're not new anymore. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see here. H how about we go through five tips for growing wealth through house hacking. Um, So, okay, so step one, and you tell me if it's, if it should be your step one, save up for a down payment without going crazy. So I guess yeah. this is, this is a tip that refers to assuming that it's going to be your primary residence. Mm -hmm. You should be treating it the same way as buying a home for yourself. Yeah. Now with rental properties, let's say you're buying out of state. You don't care about how the lawn looks necessarily. You don't care about the colors of the, um, the house. You don't care about right. the drawers necessarily, the, the style of the house. This is a different situation because you're living in the property. Yeah. So yeah, right. Because house hacking, you're you're living there and renting yeah. out rooms. So you want to. I'm sure everyone wants to live in a nice house and have the nice lawn. And yeah, yeah I think most people would want to live in a nice place. So going full circle, that means that you're not going to get as good of a as a, um, as good of a deal, most likely, than if you were just buying a rental unit out of state. Uh, it all. I'm sure it all it depends, varies, right? Because yeah, you get a house in foreclosure. But mm -hmm. you're trying to find the beautiful the home for you, like that beautiful home yeah. you dream. Well, yeah. Again, if it's that, yeah. But some people don't want the most beautiful course, home. Yeah. Some people are like, I just want a nice, you know, clean, affordable house to live in and house hack while I'm starting or building my wealth. Yeah. All right, and I think that pretty much covers a lot about it. And I think yeah. we're gonna have to tackle this topic again, but not in its solo video. But we kind of mentioned anything we forgot about talking later on in the series. Sure. Uh, is there anything else you want to tell? the dmgh podcast team <laughs> uh just keep listening stay tuned you know we're happy to bring you everything we can to help yeah so house hacking good or bad good if you do it right awesome that applies for everything <laughs> that, yeah, that applies That's for true. everything right it's true yeah dan thanks for obviously being a guest again my pleasure thank you chris for having me again appreciate it always
So as always, guys, thanks for listening. I hope this helped at least one of you. If it helped one, then I'm happy. There you go. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Thanks, guys. Morning dew, familiar ache. Being awake, being almost me. I breathe sweet war in the air. Vague trail of memories, fair food, loose and fancy free. And that's as much as I can say. Broken glass, the weight of rain and even skies, choices we make, drifting from everything.